Hey everybody, welcome back, and thank you for your patience with that overlong setup. But I, there was just so much to talk about. I really wanted to give a full view of how everything worked. And so, but now, at long last, we can finally start fighting off the attack on Sandpoint. Although, there today we have a, a special surprise guest appearance by my wife, Jennifer! Hello! Everybody say hi to Jen. Uh, basically what happened is she heard me, uh, she was in the other room, she heard me say about how this was going to be a real adventure. I mean, I was going to be using our two characters. Whatever we find, we really keep. You know, if we live or die, it's real. This is all counts. And then she said, hey, wait a minute. If you're using my character, I am going to be in there. I'll be making decisions for my character, thanks. And I said, well, honey, that means you have to be in the video. And so we reached an agreement, and so she is sitting over here with her stuff, and I'll be sitting over here, and you're getting two for the price of one today in the Rise of the Rune Lords Attack on Sad Point Pathfinder Adventure Card Game. Okay, so let's jump right into it now. I will be the first player. No, actually, the first thing that Jen said is when she came along, she said, we are not starting in the town square. We are definitely starting in the cathedral. Like, okay, honey. Um, <laughs> specifically because, uh, because Jen actually has a lot of blessings in her deck. And this uh, the special thing here about being able to, if you defeat a monster, you get your blessings back. She really liked that. She wanted to start over there. So she said, hey, that's where we're starting. And I'm like, okay. Okay. And so there we are. So we just move that around, move the decks around so she can reach where she's going to be. Because, well, let's see, we're going to start playing. I'll be the first player, and the back page of the manual has a very, very nice summary sheet of a bunch of stuff. But most importantly, the turn overview. First thing you do, every turn, every player's turn, you advance the Blessings deck. Now this is a stack of 30 randomly chosen Blessing cards. You can see there's still some in the box. 30 random blessing cards, and this is a timer. We have 30 turns, three zero turns, to finish this adventure before time runs out and we just automatically lose. Now so far in every game we've played, we haven't even come close to running out of time. I don't know if, if, if it seems like it's a very, very soft timer. Maybe with more players it makes more of a difference. But anyway, I'm gonna go first, so I reveal the first one, which is a Blessings of the Gods. That's the bog standard blessing, and I put it down to indicate it's my turn. So. I've advanced the Blessings deck, and now, if I want to, this is optional, I can give a card to another player at the same location. This is why Jen and I always start in the same location every round, every game, because I, I, we found almost every game we played, I always end up, I have five weapons in my deck, of my, my deck of 15 cards, so every time I've always started with a couple of weapons in my hand, and I have this time too. I've got my Deathbane Light Crossbow, thanks again for finding that, honey, um, which I'm not giving her, but I am going to give her my Sling. So, because the interesting thing is, Jen's character, Linny, has no weapons. I mentioned this in the setup. She cannot have weapons. But at the beginning of the game, there's nothing stopping me from giving her a weapon. And we've always done this. I always give her one of my ranged weapons. And that's why she chose to level up her dexterity so that she's better with all these ranged weapons I keep feeding her. Okay, so that means I'm actually starting with a hand of four and one less hit point. I've basically given a hit point to Jen because the number of cards we have in our deck is our life. If I ever run out of these cards and I have to draw a card and there's nothing here, I die. And it's permadeath. It is the real death, to quote True Blood. So um, it is something to bear in mind. And you know, I don't want Harsh to die because he's got a lot of really cool stuff. You know, I've been playing with him now, and we've played what, five or six games? He is not going to die today, not on my watch. Anyway, though, so. I did a, use my option of giving a card to another player. Now, if I want to, I can move to another location. This is also optional. I can also optional. I can stay where I am or I can move. And then finally, we get into the meat of the game. I explore wherever I go. Now, I am going to move. I'm, I'm going to move away because Jen and I have found, actually, with this combination of characters, it's good that we split up. Because, specifically, I, Harsk, have this cool ability where... I can recharge a card, which basically means take a card from my hand and put it at the bottom of my deck. Whenever I discard a card, that's basically like losing a hit point, you know, because you're, it's, it's in your discard pile, I can't use it anymore. But if I take a card and put it at the bottom of my deck, I didn't lose any hit points, you see. So basically, I can recharge a card and add a 1d4, the four-sided die, to any combat check in another location. So because I'm this great ranged guy, I could run over to the other side of town, and I could still keep an eye on Jen. If she gets in trouble, I could discard a card to pew, fire an arrow off to help her in a fight. So that's why we usually split up. And then what happens is I usually go get the crap beaten out of me, and then I come crawling back to her so she can cast a cure spell on me and heal me. But, you know, it, it works. It works. You know, we, we've got a good plan. We've got a good system. So I'm going to come over here to the Swallowtail Festival, primarily because this is a brand new card. We've never seen this card before. As you can see, this is a location one. This is in the new, you know, the, the expansion, the rise that comes with the game. So I just want to come over here because it's a new place. Now, at my location, 
At the start of my turn, I can, well, it doesn't matter. At the start of my turn, I was in the cathedral. So I can't do this, so I'll worry about that next turn. And so basically, I have arrived, and now I have to explore. It's really simple. I just flip the top card and see what I found. And wow, right off the bat, I found the villain. I found Rip Nugget and Stickfoot. This is the guy, here you can see, he's a cute little goblin on a cute little gigantic gecko, which I guess is the size of a, probably a St. Bernard or something like that. I have found him, and I have to, this is who we have to beat. If we beat this guy, we win the entire, the, the, the entire scenario. But it's not going to be that easy, because he's going to get a chance to run away. Now, so I'm going to get a chance to fight him. And interestingly, uh, actually this is the first time we've ever seen this, honey. We have to hit him twice. First, he has to be beaten with combat. And then, oh, because we have to beat Stickfoot, his, his uh, lizard. And then we have to beat him in combat. So he has to be beaten twice to actually win. And this is interesting. Both Jen and I, if we were both together, if Jen were over here with me, she could help. She, I could fight one and she could fight the other. But since we're split up, I'm going to have to fight both of these by myself. So anyway, but now here's the first thing. After this fight is over, whether I beat them or not, you know, whether I hurt him or he hurts me, either way, he is going to run away. He is going to go hide himself in one of the decks. It could be any of the decks. But now, before, he, before I fight him and before he gets a chance to run away, Jen has an option to try to close the location she is in. And if she does that, that means the, the Sandfoot Cathedral, it means we flip this, everything is gone, and this is not a place he can run to. Then he can only run to one of these three places. So Jen has the option to attempt closing this down, but there's a downside to it. If she does that, all this cool stuff goes away. And Jen was really looking forward to exploring this because there's, some bless there's three blessings in here, there's two spells, there's an ally, and I just said, honey, if you want, I mean, you didn't see, she could shut this down. Honey, you have the option to shut down the, are you, she is not going to. She's being a little greedy. We're here trying to stop this guy from escaping, but Jen's gonna, no, I just wanna go search the cathedral. Okay, so Jen could shut, if she wanted to, she would attempt to close this now by banishing a blessing or Father Xantus, if she had him. She doesn't have Father Xantus, but she does have a blessing. She could banish this blessing. Banish means remove permanently. This is not a temporary thing. It goes back in the box and Jen forever loses, forever, her, the blessing of the goddess uh, Calistria. So, and you don't want to do that, do you? So, she had the option, but she's not going to. Alrighty, so now we continue on, and now I am going to engage Rip Nugget and his trusty steed in combat. Let's look at this a little bit closer. Okay, now, before the encounter, so before the fight even happens, I have to succeed at a stealth check. I have no stealth. I am not a stealthy guy at all. Or the difficulty to beat Rip Nugget is increased by two. So I have to sneak up on him, and if I don't, He's, he gets tougher. Um, he goes from a 10 to a 12, which is very, very tough. So, and he's got a little quote there. Uh, he's, oh, he's got a little, it's a goblin song like Tolkien. Oh, oh. Do you want to sing the song? No. All right. Got big crowns, got big knives, got big gems for goblin wives. Me big chief, him big gecko, nugget make your face go a recco. Okay. That's not exactly Tolkien. It's not 15 <laughs> birds and five fur trees, but it'll do. That's, that's very, very cute. That's very sweet. A lot of flavor. You know, well, actually, this is the most flavor I've ever seen. But you know, anyway, so I have to first of all try and sneak up on him. I have to do a stealth of nine. Now, I, stealth is a subset of dexterity. I don't have it. I've got a subset ranged. So um, basically, I have no stealth. I, you know, we've seen stealthy boots and like potions of stealth. I have none of that stuff. So, when you don't have the skill, and I don't, that means you're crappy at it and you always have to roll the d4. See, for instance, if I, if I wanted to do fortitude, my fortitude is under my constitution, I'd get to roll a 12-sided dice. But since I have no stealth, I have to roll a 4-sided die, which means it's impossible for me to beat a 9. Now, we could throw some blessings at it. You could throw a blessings of the gods. Um, you know, I could throw a blessing of the gods. Jen could throw a blessing of Calistria. Every time you use a blessing, you know, Jen could bless me, you know, or ask for blessings, and Calistria will bless me, even though she's on the other side of town. I would add another side. So if we both throw a blessing, I get to roll three. I get to roll this three times. But even still, that's a long shot of beating a nine. When on average, you're going to get a two out of this. So I think I'm just going to. I'm just going to. I'm going to fail. What did I get? And it's a three, and I fail to sneak up on Rip Nugget and Sickfoot. So he is actually a nine and a 12. This guy's gonna work me over. I might be having to go beg for some healing sooner than I thought. 
Okay, so didn't sneak up on him. Rip Nugget is increased by two. Now we get into the fighting. He is a monster. To beat him, I do a check. I'm gonna do a combat check. First, I'm gonna do a combat check against Stickfoot, his steed, and I have to meet or beat. I have to hit a nine, basically, nine or better. So, how do I do combat? Well, I've got a cup. Well, no, I've, I don't. Jen has a lot of options. Jen could use the sling I gave her, or she could use her big nuke spell, the Holy Light, which is a super powerful spell, especially against undead. Or she could literally turn into a bear. She has a special power that lets her turn into her animal form, and she could fight her as an animal. Jen's got a lot of options. Me, I got a crossbow. That's it. So, I think I'll just go with the crossbow. If I had the sling, I could use the sling instead. But, you know, and the, and the sling is good because it does bludgeoning damage, which you um, Dungeon and Dragons geeks know is good against skeletons. But this guy is not particularly weak. I'm just going to use my crossbow. Now, how does that work? I have to play my card. However, um, basically, for my combat check, I reveal it. Now, what that means is I show everybody at the table I've got it, but I am not going to discard this card. It stays in my hand. I can use this turn after turn, fight after fight after fight, because all I have to do is reveal it, which means keep it. And so I reveal it, and that means I'm going to get to roll my dexterity or ranged, and then on top of that, I get to roll a 1d8, and I get to add 1 to the whole thing. And if I was fighting undead, I'd get to roll another undead, but this is not undead, this is a goblin, so I don't get the special super undead, the deathbane ability, but say la vie. Also, if I'm proficient in weapons, which I am, I am proficient with weapons, if I want to, I can discard this and add an additional 1d4 um, at, a, or at another location, or 1d8 if it's against an undead. So I'm not going to do any of that stuff, though. That's for helping Jen in a fight. Um, let's see. So. I've got to beat a nine. I'm going to use this. I reveal it, and that means I choose my my dexterity or my ranged. And if I look at my dexterity, my dexterity is a D8 plus one because I leveled up my dexterity. But my ranged is my dexterity plus three. So I'm going to choose ranged because that's what I'm, I'm a ranger. That's what I'm good at. So that means it's a D8 plus one plus three. So it's a D8 plus four. So I take the D8. I'm going to roll this and add four, and then I'm going to roll it again and add one more to it. And now we have an option. Before I roll, we, it's actually, this is all laid out over here when you attempt checks. First, you determine the skill you're using. I just did. I'm, I'm using ranged. Then you determine the difficulty. It's going to be a nine. Things you know, might change. It might make it go higher or lower, but I know my difficulty is a nine. Then I play cards, and not just me, anybody. Any player can play cards that affect my check, or I can use my powers. Then after I've done that, I assemble my dice, I, may, I make the roll, I take damage if I lose, and then I resolve the check. All right. Now, I could add more by giving up my Blessing of the Gods, because you see, uh, um, if I discard this card, I'll add another dice. So that means I get to roll my d8 a, a third time. Jen can do the same thing. She could give up her Blessing, which allows her... Uh, uh, Jen's very, very patient. Um, you know how these go. Your turn will come shortly. Uh, discard this card and add, oh, well, it's really good if I was doing a non-combat dexterity, because I guess this is the goddess of non-combat dexterity. But I can, Jen could discard it to add one to my check. And that means, now what do you think? I mean, i got to fight this guy twice, though. And it, it, the second fight is the 12. If we're going to give those up, I should probably do it on the second fight. Well, you're going to fight him, and he's going to run away anyway. I don't think you should blow everything... Yeah, but if, if, I, if I don't get a good showing, I'll lose a lot of cards, and I'll take a big hit. Well, okay, I'll fight the... I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll wait to see how, the, uh, go, how it goes with the lizard first. And if he really works me over hard, maybe... Oh, that's the thing. If he, if he hurts me hard, I might lose my blessing before I get a chance to use it. You might as well use it. Okay, Jen agrees. So, uh, I am not taking any chances. This is probably overkill. But I'm going to throw in my Blessing of the Gods as well. Um, because I'm worried I'm going to... Although, gosh, he's only a 9. Let's think about this for a second. I'm going to get to roll this twice and add 4. So that's 4 plus 4. If, on average, you've got to assume an 8-side die. On average, it's going to give you 4. So it's 4 plus 4 plus 4. That's a 12. He is a 12. No, but right. But I'm fighting the Lizard first. Okay. So I should be able to beat the Lizard with my Super Crossbow. Okay. Let's go with it. Okay. So I'm going to roll this twice. And um, is there anything else I could do? My uh, portion of fortitude just helps me 
um, in a fortitude check, but I'm not going to be doing any fortitude checks. This uh, ghostly form lets me lets me banish this card and choose a character at my location. That character can evade a barrier. So if I'd run into a barrier and it was going to really work me over, I could poof disappear in a ghostly form. But I'm not going to use either of those. I'm going to save my Blessing of the God for the second fight. I'm just going to show my crossbow, which means I get to roll 2d8 and I get to add 4. 1 plus, oh no, 5. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I get to add 5 to the roll. Alrighty, here we go. This should be fine. Um, roll twice and add 5. A 1. That is not a promising start. Roll again. And this time I'm going to add 7. An 8! Alrighty. Uh, so that's 9. Add five. 14. 14. Smacked him. Okay. Stickfoot is down. But now I move on to his boss, who is very angry because he's because I didn't sneak up on him. He's a 12. I got to do this again. If somebody else were here, they could take the second fight. And interestingly, um, even if I had lost against the first fight, I would still have to do the second fight because I'm fighting both of these. So now let's see. I got to get a 12. Now, what? Do I, I just got a 14. Why did you add five? Huh? Because um, I get... Plus one, you know, it's, it's a, it, I, I roll my regular die, I, so I roll this twice, once for my, my range and once for it. I got plus one here, plus one here, and plus three there. Okay. So that's why I get plus five. Whee! Okay, so, and I, I really, I, I don't need to give up a, a blessing. But he's 12. He is a 12, you know what, and I, what would really suck is if I didn't use this blessing and then I had to lose it to damage. So for the big guy, I am going to throw out my blessing. So that means, and now Jen, I don't think you're going to throw your blessing away on it. Why don't you let me use mine? Really? Because I've got six cards. Yeah, but you're, I mean, you could use that six card to explore a second time. Okay. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, plus, I mean, you get the special bonus, you know. I, okay. Oh, but if it's in your discard, that's cool. See, Jen's interesting spot. If she uses her blessing, it goes into her discard pile. The special thing of the Sandpoint Cathedral is whenever she beats a monster, she can take a, a blessing from her discard pile and add it to her hand. So you would get that back. Yes. Okay. So are we going to use your blessing instead of mine? Yes. Okay. So Jen is discarding her blessing, and that means I'm going to get to roll this three times instead of two to hit the 12 of, of what's his name, of, of uh, Rip Nugget. All right. So three times and then add five. Five, eight, nine, ten plus five is fifteen. Um, and if we had not done that, let's see, fifteen would have been thirteen. I still would have. So Jen didn't need to use it. If I'd only rolled twice, I would have barely beat him by one, but I would have beat him. Okay. So Rip Nugget and Stickfoot are no more. Now sometimes it says you know on defeat do stuff, but he doesn't have that. But after you do any what's it called any um, resolve the check. I didn't take any damage. I resolved the check. Um, which means, you know, if it said, uh, you know, after the check, do certain things, but he doesn't. Now, you think, yay, we won, but nope, he is going to sneak off. And so what we do is we draw three random cards from the Blessing deck outside of the game. One, two, three. Okay, and we add him here and we shuffle those up. Oh, it's so nice to have a shuffling assistant. Alrighty, shuffle those up. And now one of each of those goes in each of the villages. We have no idea where he, where he is. You know, and just put it in, then you have to shuffle the whole deck. This would be a real pain for me to do with one hand. But let's just watch Jen's beautiful hands adorned by um, various and sundry jewelry thingies. Um, Jen could have been a hand model, couldn't she, folks? Have you recently done, uh, have you gotten a manicure lately? No? no. All righty. <laughs> <laughs> Jen's not really wanting to talk much today. She talks quite a bit more when we play, but I think uh, she's a little bit self-conscious about being on camera. Even just her hands and her voice. Okay, so he has run away. We have no idea where he has run off to. And at the same time, some blessings appear. Now, here's the deal. If I had not beaten him, if, you know, say when uh, I had, you know, I'd rolled snake eyes on all that stuff, and I, uh, or I, after my three rolls and my plus five, I had only had a nine and he was coming at me with a 12, that means he would have done the difference, three points of damage to me. That means I would have had to choose three cards to discard, and then he still would have run away. But when he ran away, instead of taking random cards from the blessing, they would have come from the timer. So every time you lose against a boss and they run away, it, it digs through the timer that much faster. But no problem, we beat him easy peasy, and off he goes. Now, 
that was a very long explore phase because it's that's you know that can't happen that you run right in the back guy and if jen had not been greedy and had taken the chance to close this down he would have only had three places to run away to but jen she wants she wants to get some stuff she wants to she basically wants the fat loot that's what she's here for and so she didn't close him down so he might be over there he might be we might run into him next turn who knows or he might be right here he might be screwing with us okay so we reshuffled now um, I've done my explore. If I want to, before my turn is over, I could explore again because I've still got my blessing of the gods. As you can see, one of the things you can, you can do several things. Um, but one of the things you can do is I could discard it and explore. So I could do another explore right off the bat. But Jen's been very patient, so I don't think I'm going to explore. I'm going to let her. So I'm just going to hold on to this for later. Um, Why don't you do it? Um, well, you might run into trouble and I might need to help you with it. Sure. Right, and we're not in any particular rush. God. Right, so... After the explore, um, if, if, if there were no cards, if I had completely gone through this entire deck, I could try to close the location, but obviously that's not gonna happen for a while. And so now I reset my hand. I can discard any cards I don't like. Um, and I basically have to get my hand size to my hand, or my hand size, and then end my turn. My hand size is by default five, although someday I could level it up. Oh, I'm sorry, where is it? It's about over here, is by default Five, I could someday level it up to six, but for now it's five. So I've got four. If I didn't like any of these, I could get rid of them, but I'm happy with all this stuff. I'm just gonna draw one and see what I get. And I got another crossbow. Mm, I might uh, take this over to Jen and give her a crossbow and upgrade that sling I gave her. Although actually they're both quite nice. Okay, anyway, so now that was the end of my turn and now it is Jen's turn. First thing you do on a turn is the timer continues. And the rules suggest doing this, that every time you put a card out, put it facing in the player who did it, because it's really easy to forget this step. And you know, so if you do and you're like, hey, oh crap, I don't think I, did you, did I, I mean, you can just, this becomes a really simple reminder of, hey, look, it's not pointing at you, so you forgot to do your thing. So Jen has put out her timer and now it is her turn. She could, well, okay, first of all, she could, there's nobody there, she can't give me anything. She could move, but she's just been very patient. She is gonna go straight to exploring. So please explore. And what did you find, honey? A goblin pyromaniac, okay. This is, we've never seen this before. This is one of the new guys. Okay, so after the encounter, the goblin pyromaniac, Pyro, will deal one damage. So even after he dies, the flame will get you. So he's, and he's a, he's a medium level guy. He's got an eight to beat. Now also, oh crap, I forgot one thing. Um, during this scenario, the attack on Sandpoint, if you ever defeat a monster with the goblin, this is still on my turn, I forgot about this. If you ever defeat a monster with a goblin trait, roll a 1d6 on a one, Every character in that location takes fire damage because all these guys are basically carrying grenades, um, you know, fire grenades. So I forgot to do this. After I beat him, because he was a goblin, if I rolled a one, I would have taken some fire damage. So let's see if I, if before he escaped, if he hit me on the way out. A two. He did not. Okay, so that was fine. Now, Jen is going to guarantee, because I, I assume she will beat him, after she beats him, she'll take one point of damage. So she knows she's going to have to discard at least one card. And she'll have to do this check as well. Every goblin we run across, as you can see, this has the goblin trait, is going to have that problem. So that's what Jen has done. And so now Jen has to decide, does she want to fight with the range, with the sling I gave her, zap him with a spell, or discard a card and turn into a bear? I'm going to fight him with a sling. Jen's going to fight him with a sling. Okay. So, now, for her combat check, she reveals this card. Again, she keeps, it keeps it in her hand. Reveal a card and um, roll her dexterity or ranged. Now, she doesn't have the range skill, so it'll be her dexterity. And adds a d6. Now, instead of revealing it, she could discard this and add another d4. Now, interestingly, normally you wouldn't do that. But if I'm going to come over to you on my turn and give you this crossbow, and, I mean, you, you, you like the crossbow better than the anyway... So do you want to, or you are going to hold on to it anyway? Yes. Okay, well, now, here's another thing. Jen, as a druid, has certain powers. When you play an ally with an animal trait, you can, okay, well, nah, that doesn't matter right now, because she's not going to, she's not going to, instead of, whenever she would have to use an animal to discard it, she can recharge it instead. You know, they don't, they don't get lost, they go back into her deck. That's nice. But here's the important thing. Oh, also, the bottom one, whenever you're um, doing any check, if it's strength or dexterity, you can discard a card and roll a 10 side die. That's her turning into a big monster. But she's not going to do that. She's doing the middle bear, one. A bear. A bear, yes. Um, Stephen Colbert's worth nightmare. Um, instead, you can reveal an ally with the animal trait and add another a d4 to her, and she could upgrade that to plus one and plus two. She is going to do that. Before she does her attack, she reveals her sling. 
she also reveals her snake to say, um, what's the snake's name? Slytherin. Slith Slytherin. Um, I put her on the spot, but apparently she already had a name for it. Slytherin is going to help. So Slytherin is going to generate a 1d4 for helping out because of Jen's special druid power. And her default dexterity is a, is a d6, isn't it? Yes. Yep, it's a d6. And she gets to, so her default dex d6 plus another d6. Also, she leveled up her dexterity, so she's going to get plus one on that. So she's got this twice, this once, and one more. Plus one. Plus one. And now, if she wanted, she could also add her luck stone to the mix, but I think you're holding on to this, right? Yep. If I wanted, I could throw in my blessing of the god, which would let her roll again. Do you think I should use it? Are you, you're pretty confident? So I'm going to save this, and then she's going to be regretting it when, um, this guy, when she rolls all ones. But anyway, so you're rolling the d6 twice. That's a two. Three. So, uh, and... There's no way. That's a four. That's only seven. All right, oh wait, no, so that's seven. So this was four plus seven plus one. Remember, you leveled up. Plus eight. So she just barely, by the skin of her teeth, beat it. And um, so she hit the eight, and she defeated him. You have to meet or beat it. So now this guy is toast, and unlike the, the villain who runs away, he just goes back to the box. Um, but before he does, remember, you ha you, he deals one damage to you, so you have to give something up. You're giving up your luck stone? Okay. And as a scenario thing, you have to roll the 1d6, and on a 1, you'll have to give something else up. Nope, yeah, I, mean, you, you, I mean, you can, Jen's wondering, she's asking silently <laughs> through sign language. This says recharge. Um, when you, when you um, have to, instead of discarding this, succeed at a wisdom or survival check and recharge it, that's only if you used this. If you use this thing's special powers of adding one to your checks and stuff like that, you could maybe get it back. But you lost this because of the fire attack, so there's uh, no saving it. Should I get Discard the sling then? Your choice. You have to discard something because of that damage. Are you going to come over and... I will come over and give you my crossbow. Okay. Now, you also, because of the, um, of the event we're in, you have to roll, and if you get a one, you have to discard something else. A five. Okay, so no big deal. So, that is Jen's, and this guy goes back to box. Now, this is interesting. Um, whenever, we do, whenever we defeat a bad guy, when we try to get a spell and we fail, everything goes back to the box. But um, when there's a reminder here that once we make it to, once we have finished the Hook Mountain Massacre, which is the third adventure, we're only in the first adventure, once we finish the third adventure, which hasn't even been released yet, what will happen is low level stuff, instead of going back to the box, whenever you banish a, um, a you, instead of putting it back to the box, you remove it from the game permanently. You put it in one of these boxes because it's gone forever. Slowly, over time, low level schlubs get weak, you know, and this, you know, like this basic, if Jen had to ever banish her card, normally it would go back to the box and we could find it again someday. But, uh, you know, after we make it to that level, all basic stuff is removed from the game permanently. So that's actually a really cool thing that over time, all the low level stuff will disappear and only be high level stuff when we're high level guys. But anyway, this guy for now just goes back to the box with the other monsters. And that was Jen's explore phase. Now, um, can you explore? No, you can't. Now, wait a minute. Um, now remember, yeah. Jen, at this, she defeated a monster. So she can add a blessing from her discard pile back to her hand. So, you're going to do that, I assume. So, you know, basically, she traded her sling. If, at the end result, she traded her sling for her blessing. And next turn, I'll come over, I'll give her a light crossbow, and she's got a weapon again. Uh, everything is good with the world. Okay, so are you going to do anything to explore anymore? I don't think you can. You have no way to explore. So now it's the end of her turn. This is her hand. She could discard stuff. She could draw stuff. Are you just going to stick? Stick. All right, so she's sticking. And so now it is my turn again. I draw. It's the blessing of Inor. Now, it's interesting. These times that come up. This is just a timer, but if I ever use my Blessing of the Gods, it has its standard thing of, if I find it in a town, I automatically acquire it. You, if I discard it, you've seen us discarding it, that adds one to a check. If I discard it, I can, remember I talked about this, I could have explored again in my location, but I didn't. This is the interesting thing about a standard Blessing of the Gods. You can treat this as if it were the top card of the Blessings. So I could either, whenever I need to use this, I could treat it as a Blessing of the Gods and have these abilities, or I could treat it as the blessing of Irori and have this, which means I could use this to add two dice to a non-combat intelligence test. So if on my turn I find a spell that needs somebody really smart to do it, my blessing of the god could turn into this blessing of Inori. But we'll worry about that later because it's been a half an hour now. Jen and I have each done one move, only one. But I think you kind of got an idea of how this game plays. Every turn. 
we move around, we try to figure out the best place to be. Um, you know, sometimes you don't move at all, it just makes sense to stay. Oh, we totally forgot. When you were fighting, I had a special power. The reason we split up, totally forgot about that, is when Gemma's fighting that goblin, I could have recharged one of my cards. I probably would have taken this ghostly form, put it under the deck, and that means I would have been able to add another 1d4, and she would have, I totally forgot, sorry honey pie, that's okay. you beat him anyway, but that would have been really bad if you hadn't, and then I hadn't helped. But anyway, that's why it's good for us to split up, because I can help her from afar when I remember to. Durr. I'm glad I'm not the only one forgetting these things. And, um, but anyway, so every turn you move around or you stay where you are, you explore, you deal with whatever you find, sometimes you do multiple explores, sometimes you find really big things, sometimes you find really simple things, and then you keep going until you've hunted down the guy, he has no place else to escape to, and when you defeat him, you win the mission. That's how it plays. Now, if you'd like to watch some more, um, we'll definitely do some extended. Let's see, do we want to do some extended or do we just want to go straight to the end? I think, actually I'm surprised how much we showed there. I think, no, okay, we'll do an extended, and we'll see how long that goes, maybe we'll do an end game too. But anyway, there's buttons on the screen. Pick one of them, your choice, final thoughts, whatever. In five, four, three, two, one. Thanks everybody.